This is Industry Wednesday. Every Wednesday, we analyze a different industry. Today, we're looking at 15 things you didn't know about the arms industry. Welcome to ALUX.com, the place where future billionaires come to get informed. Hello, Aluxers, and welcome to another original video brought to you by our team here at Alux.com. Today, we're going to take an in-depth look at the arms industry and its global impact. In this video, we'll be sharing the 15 things you didn't know about this industry. Since early man developed crude weapons with which to defend his territory and family against animals and human enemies, arms have been an important part of our life. The modern arms industry trades in weapons such as firearms and missiles. It's a complicated industry, with many illicit secret deals and publicity shy arms dealers. If you're new here, welcome! Be sure to subscribe and follow us on Instagram at Alux. Well, let's fire off the first shot, shall we, and focus our sights on the 15 things you didn't know about the arms industry. Number 1. The beginnings of the arms industry are traced back to the discovery of gunpowder. The Chinese discovered gunpowder quite by accident while trying to come up with some concoctions to extend human life. This happened in 850 AD. The explosive powder they made would revolutionize the way the future would be fought. Gunpowder made its way to Europe during the Mongol invasions and along the Silk Trade Route. By the 14th century, many Europeans were using hand cannons loaded with gunpowder. In the 1500s, the first firearms were developed. These included the flintlock rifle, and this was the blueprint of firearms that would follow. Number 2. The biggest game changer in the arms industry was the automatic rifle. The first automatic weapons included the Gatling gun, which was used during the American Civil War. Once the barrel was locked, a hand crank was used to fire off round after round. In 1885, the world's first automatic weapon was created by firearms maker Hiram Maxim. The semi-automatic pistol was developed by John M. Browning. This was the first sidearm that fired multiple rounds without needing to be reloaded or recocked. Its invention in 1910 meant it was in its infancy when troops went to fight in World War I in 1914. Many of them still used rifles that needed constant reloading. Number 3. The name AK-47 tells you a lot more about the weapon than you think. The AK-47 automatic rifle was invented in Soviet Russia. It is also known as the Kalashnikov Model 1947. The A in AK-47 stands for Avtomat, which is Russian for automatic. The K stands for Kalashnikov, a nod to its inventor. The weapon was designed by Mikhail Timoveyevich Kalashnikov. The 47 represents the year 1947 in which the version we know today was accepted. The AK-47 is the world's most widely used automatic assault rifle. It can fire 600 rounds per minute. It's hard to know how many Kalashnikovs have been made since 1947, but it's estimated there are more than 100 million in circulation today. Number 4. The reasons for the AK-47's popularity are about form, function, and price. The AK-47 is the weapon of choice for soldiers and armies across the world. Although never officially used by the American Armed Forces, many soldiers during the Vietnam War would take fallen enemy combatants' AK-47s. The reason for this is simple. The AK-47 is functional and reliable. It's an easy weapon to operate and can take a beating without it affecting the rifle's performance. The weapon seldom jams up and works well in just about any climate or environment. It may not be the most accurate weapon, but it's widely regarded as the best. Inexpensive to manufacture, the AK-47 is the cheapest automatic rifle money can buy. Number 5. Unsurprisingly, the arms industry doesn't function well during peacetime. 
Without war and conflict, the arms industry is in danger of collapse. After major conflicts such as World War I and World War II, the arms producers and sellers had an oversupply of weapons with no real demand. The end of the Cold War between the United States and its Western allies and the Soviet Union left the arms industry in chaos. There was a flood of weapons from Soviet caches into the marketplace. At the same time, manufacturers were at a loss. No one needed the weapons they were producing. Number 6. Conflict is often manufactured to stimulate the sale of weapons. The world's superpowers control the arms manufacturing market. For manufacturers to survive, they need customers. Often, arms deals are crafted with opposing parties involved in a conflict in developing nations so the arms can be supplied and billions of dollars of revenue generated. This is done regardless of arms embargoes that prevent the sales of arms to such factions. However, weapons always find their way into the hands of those that seek them to wage war within and beyond the borders of their countries. Number 7. Licenses to deal in arms are granted despite the horrors they wreak on civilians. We need only look at the devastation in countries in the Middle East to see that arms traders are ruthless. Countries are using these conflicts to further their own agendas, and they do so by endorsing the supply of arms to opposing sides. Through convoluted arms deals, governments are supplying arms to administrations and factions that are not allies. Despite promising to supply arms only to their allies, their arms find their way into the hands of the opposition as well. How else do you think a group like ISIS gets arms and ammunition? Number 8. The arms industry is not independent of governments. Many arms manufacturers would boast they create jobs and keep families fed and housed. While on the face of it, it might seem to be true, these companies don't do so on their own. The manufacturers are heavily subsidized by governments to produce and supply arms and ammunition. Lobbyists are employed by arms manufacturers to make sure that governments continue to spend money on their products. These influencers have the ear of government officials and grease the wheels to facilitate arms deals that may generate great income but also cause untold misery and death. Number 9. The world of illegal arms trading was brought to light by the movie Lord of War. 2005's movie Lord of War starred Nicolas Cage and Jared Leto as brothers who get into the illegal arms trade. The script was based on the stories told by real arms dealers and smugglers. The movie showed how arms dealers sell weapons to both sides in a conflict simply to keep the war going and the demand for their weapons increasing. The story shows how easily illicit arms dealers and smugglers could lay their hands on weapons after the dissolution of the USSR. These weapons were distributed to war-torn countries across the Middle East and Africa. The lengths an Interpol agent goes to in trying to catch the smugglers highlights the struggles law enforcement agencies face in trying to stop the illegal trade in arms. Number 10. Many governments spend more on their military than they do on education. Heavy investment in the armed forces and defense of a nation is good for arms manufacturers and dealers. A large portion of the budget allocated to defense is spent on arms and ammunition. There are several countries that budget more money for war than they do for education. Even the United States has been shown to spend more money on defense than it does on its education system. The situation is even worse in war-torn nations such as Yemen, Syria, and Afghanistan, where virtually no money is invested in education. The country's spending is engulfed by conflict. There is a good argument for spending more money on education now to avoid wars in the future. However, arms manufacturers would of course disagree, as such an approach would affect their bottom line. Number 11. A recent scandal involving Saudi Arabia is threatening its arms deals with the U.S. The President of the United States, Donald Trump, is under increasing pressure from within his own party and government to cancel arms deals signed with Saudi Arabia.
This comes in the wake of the murder of an American citizen, journalist Jamal Khashoggi, in a Saudi Arabian consulate in Istanbul, Turkey, in October 2018. Investigators have brought to light the instruction to kill Khashoggi came right from the top of the Saudi government, as he was an outspoken critic of the kingdom. Critics of the president want him to act against Saudi Arabia using the arms deal to punish the kingdom. So far, the president has resisted this move. Number 12. The value of the illegal arms trade market is hard to estimate. Illicit arms trading is big business. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world with smugglers and traders doing what's necessary to eliminate competitors to secure their share of the sales. Global arms sales are estimated to be worth around $60 billion a year. It's also estimated that illegally traded arms make up between 10 and 20 percent of the global arms trade. Arms trafficking is done on a small-scale basis by some gangs. However, there are global dealers who move massive amounts of weapons across borders all around the world. Number 13. The effects of the arms trade are easy to see. Rising numbers of conflicts around the world are a direct result of the players in the arms trade. Their continued survival is contingent on war and violence. However, on a micro level, the increase in the number of gun-related deaths can also be attributed to arms manufacturers and gun runners. The illicit trade in arms on the streets of cities around the world has allowed the proliferation of gang violence and gun crime. In response, law enforcement officials are more more heavily armed than ever before, with many arguing that police officers are armed like soldiers. Arms manufacturers and illegal traders alike both benefit from the escalating rate of violence. Number 14. Violent TV series and video games are often blamed for increased gun violence, but are they solely to blame? There are many who argue that the world is a more violent place because children and young adults are exposed to more violence than those from previous generations. However, it can definitely be argued the availability of weapons is what's driving higher rates of gun crime. The U.S. has experienced multiple devastating mass shooting events in schools, clubs, and bars. Critics argue that the ease of access to assault and automatic weapons are the main cause. Unfortunately, several attempts to make gun ownership regulations more strict have not really succeeded. Number 15. Arms manufacturers continue to modernize their weapons. There is an increasing appetite for innovation in the weapons industry. Small arms are being made from lighter materials. They are also made more resilient and harder to damage. 3D printing has brought with it the frightening prospect of printing a gun without using metal. This would make metal detectors at airports and other public buildings obsolete. Ammunition is being developed to pierce body armor and cause the maximum damage to victims. As if there isn't enough carnage, weapons manufacturers seemed determined to create more. And Alexers, that's a wrap on our take of the arms industry. Now before you go, we have a question for you. Do you think there are ways that gun control laws can stop some of the terrible violence we've been seeing lately? Let us know in the comments. And of course, for watching this video all the way to the end, here's your thank you reward. A bonus fact. Number 16. The AK-47 appears on the national flag of Mozambique. The African country endured a long civil war won by the Mozambican Liberation Front, or Fralamo. Their opponents were the Mozambican National Resistance, or RENAMO. The war lasted from 1977 to 1992. Both sides were backed and supplied with arms by opposing sides of the Cold War. In 1983, the Mozambican flag was adopted by Frelimo. The flag features an AK-47 assault rifle, a symbol of the long-fought war that claimed so many lives in the fight for control of the country. Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxers. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpicked these videos, which we recommend you watch next. Thank you for being an Aluxer, and we'll see you back tomorrow.